Hey y'all, welcome back. It is a once again, Foodie Friday. <laughs> um, had an interesting conversation this week with a coworker and I was talking about wanting to eat more like healthy fats and I was trying to sort through everything that is, what is an unhealthy fat? What is a healthy fat? Oh, and by the way, I know my eyes have two different looks on them. That is from my broke ass review on Wednesday. I just finished filming that. So if you want to see how we got there, go check it out. <laughs> Anyways, so healthy fats, unhealthy fats, trying to sort that out. I realized that one of my absolute favorites, butter is obviously not the healthiest fat you could eat. Cheese, not the healthiest fat either. And I'm like, but I just did a cheese stuffed big potato last week that was smothered in butter and fried. What do I do with that? I'm pretty sure that eliminating butter and cheese is like a felony here or something. But that notwithstanding, the idea is to eat more healthy fats and less of the bad ones. And so I'm batting this around with some friends in the lunchroom. One of the girls that was in there goes, anything you can do with butter, you can do with avocados. Can you though? Can you? So I kind of started thinking about this. I'm like, well, avocados aren't creamy, but they do have a really nice texture. And they sort of have a texture like butter, like a hard, like a, like a, like a saturated fat. And, but they're not right. So maybe you can. So that's what we're going to find out on this week's Foodie Friday. If that sounds interesting to you, hang on. We'll be right back. Hey, hey, yeah, this is how it's faded. This is how it's faded. Yeah. One of the things that I do with butter, that I like to do with butter, is I like to make herbed butter. So the way that you make herbed butter or compound butter is you let the butter soften, you mix in either dried herbs or fresh herbs or maybe spices. You can mold the butter back or you can make like, what I usually do is I just make like a tube of it in some plastic wrap. Like I don't get real fancy with it. But the idea then you can take it, you let it harden again, you could take it out and you can slice it. And like, let's say that you made some curry butter. You could take that and put it on some rice or put it on a vegetable. So I'm gonna try making a compound butter out of avocado. So this is what I have chosen to make my compound butter. I chose garlic, sage, and thyme because I think those three things go together really, really well. And I think that'd be great on something like chicken or like a grilled chicken breast. And then you could just take this compound, compound avocado spread. Let's call it that. Compound avocado spread. <laughs> And I think that'd be great to actually put on top of like a grilled chicken, even rice, something like that. So let's get to making it. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I have some thyme leaves here. Thyme has a bit of a citrusy flavor. That's gonna be really, really great because I think avocados go better with citrus and we're, we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna do a half a teaspoon of each of these. So I'm gonna take a half a teaspoon of the thyme half a teaspoon of rubbed sage. This is kind of a, sage also has kind of a citrusy. Sage is the thing that makes sausage taste like sausage. When you eat sausage, you can taste salt, pepper, and something else. Sage is that something else. So if you wanted to make sausage out of beef, you can take a pound of ground beef, tablespoon of sage, and a tablespoon of pepper, and about a teaspoon and a half of salt and let it sit overnight in the fridge and you'll have beef sausage, beef like crumble sausage. And I'm gonna take half a teaspoon of garlic and you know, obviously garlic goes with avocado because we put it in guacamole. So the floofiness of that rubbed sage is gonna hold on one to these others and give me more of like a homogenous blend. All right, now we gotta get some avocado together. I'm gonna use 
two avocados for this. And let me show you how to prep an avocado. So these are really, really ripe. Just got these yesterday and these are on the small side. I like these packages of avocado because generally you know that they've all been picked at the same time so they're all gonna get ripe at the same time. Here's how avocados ripen. Rude, right? But it's true. And these avocados were like, I bought them Friday night. Today is Sunday. I bought them Friday night. They are super ripe at this point, but when I bought them Friday night, I was like, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to film with these until Monday or Tuesday. But I've been checking them every single night and I'm like, okay, they're ready to go. <laughs> you know, just like, oh, okay, they're finally ripe. We're going to do two of these small avocados. The biggest thing people wrestle with with an avocado is getting that pit out. I literally saw a video where this chick just cuts right through the avocado. Don't do that. The pits are toxic. So once you've contaminated your knife, you've contaminated the whole avocado. What you want is a knife with a serrated edge, okay? Because what we're doing is only slightly dangerous. And then you want to have for this, I just have a little bowl here and it needs to be a heavy knife. Don't use a small knife for this. Use a knife that's heavy, it gives you more control. This is gonna be important. Nice avocado. So if they're completely ripe and they're like ready for guacamole, they should be slightly soft to the touch, like, a, like almost like an overripe tomato or a garden tomato. Hold the avocado like this, okay? And you're just gonna go down into that skin. That serrated edge is gonna let you go down in. Go until just pushing on the knife you can't feel anymore. I've hit the pit, all right? Now, I'm just gonna wind my knife right around there, okay? Twist it. So holding it this way, okay? Turn it, comes right out. See that? And you just throw it away. I'm only going to use two avocados for this. I think that's all I really need. These are nice and super ripe. And now I've got four other ones sitting here that I don't know what I'm going to do with today. <laughs> you know, if you touch avocado meat and you feel it, you're like, yeah, it is. It is actually very slippery. That's the oil of it. The oil is what's slippery. Just come in there and take it right out. There we go. I mashed it pretty well. I think I do want to take it through that strainer. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to mash this through this strainer and then we'll be right back to do the, to finish this. Cause yeah, this is going to be like watching paint dry for y'all. Okay. So we've completed this process. So my husband was nice enough to come around and let me know that I do have my food processor and that would be a much easier way to do this than pushing it through a sieve. The thing is, I thought I left my food processor in storage when we moved. No, it's here all the time, which I'm not that upset about, but that means he won that one. This is marriage we're talking about. It's a constant series of battles to be won and lost. Well, let's mix in our herbs with this beautiful amount of avocado that we have here. I set aside a quarter cup of this because we're going to do something else with that. Avocado is supposed to be able to go everywhere butter does, but we are going to put that to the test today. So I'm going to put my herbs in with this avocado and we're going to tiny whisk it all together and then it's going to go in the fridge. I think also what I want to do with this is just add a pinch of salt. It smells amazing. In order to get our molded log all I do when I make my compound butter is I just put a piece of put a piece of saran wrap out not a big deal you could do this you can do this with softened butter like I said you know my goal here is to try to find some better fat to eat in the places where I love to eat butter so gosh vegetables baked potatoes and so what I do is in the middle of this I kind of do like a, a roll I'm just going to do like right here and right here, three blobs. Avocados are turning into tribbles now in my kitchen. They're everywhere because I bought so many.
thing about avocado is it turns brown. So probably would have benefited me to put a little bit of lemon juice in this. So then I just take it and I, I fold it over. I'm gonna fold those ends in. And now we've got a little roll. It's a little tube. And that's gonna be like a stick of butter. I'm gonna stick it in the uh, fridge. So that's compound avocado spread. Let's talk about avocados. Avocados are a fruit. Their defining characteristic is that they are made up of quite a bit of fat. So about 15% of the avocado is fat. The rest of it is meat. The pit is toxic in large amounts. It contains a fungicidal toxin called persin. For humans, it wouldn't be toxic necessarily to eat the pit, but the toxin is higher percentage in the pit than anywhere else in the fruit. So depending on one's sensitivity to it, you still don't want to eat that pit. There's nothing to be gained by doing that, which is why you don't cut through the pit. You could release that higher concentration of person into the meat of whatever else you cut through. Avocados are often used in place of other fats. So avocado oil is highly sought out because it's one of those good fats that increases the good, it can increase your good cholesterol. And it also can help with reducing the risk for artery disease. Avocados don't really have a flavor. I'm sure most of you that I'm talking to, you've eaten avocados already. You know, the avocado doesn't have a lot of flavor unless you add something to it. What I found so interesting that my coworker said was, you could use it in place of butter. Wherever butter can go, the avocado could go. I can recall tasting chocolate avocado ice cream. And I'm like, this is disgusting. Chocolate, the thing is, avocado has some flavor and the flavor is herbaceous. It's herbaceous like parsley. Chocolate is earthy. So the herbaceousness and the earthiness did not go together. Since I know that avocado ice cream has been made, can be made, why not try to make it? But I started thinking about what would I do? I said, well, why don't I try to make lemon avocado ice cream? All right, so here's what we're working with. We've got a 14 ounce can of coconut milk. I've got my blender back here. We're gonna do this in a blender and we're gonna put it into a container and it's gonna go in the freezer overnight. We're not gonna churn this. All right, well, I don't know if I was supposed to shake that up. Maybe I was. What I did then is I went ahead and did three avocados. I'm gonna mash these up a little. So I'm going in with my avocado mash and we're gonna do lemon. We're gonna do the juice of two lemons, which is cool because you know what? That's gonna keep our avocado from ever, from like turning brown. We've got this lemon. Okay, we got this lemon. I started it with uh, zesting and then I wanted to kind of actually show you. So here's the thing. I want the juice out of the lemon, okay? But I also want some of this, the zest. I don't want this white stuff underneath. I don't want that, that's bitter. As you can see, I used a, just a regular peeler. I can't find my grater and I can't find my zester. As a bartender, I had like three zesters and when we moved, I couldn't, I can't find them. So you could just take this. You have to be a little more careful, but you can just start peeling that skin. And then, let me just finish this, okay? And you just have to make sure that you stay just underneath. And then what you do, once you get this beautiful, beautiful piece of zest, right you just take it and you chop it up you're putting it in a blender yeah i am but with all this other thick stuff i get the feeling that my blender isn't going to blend the zest what i want out of this skin is the oil it's trapped in those little tiny circles that you see i'm going to squeeze it through this strainer okay this is why obviously seeds all right there we go Lemon juice all in. That seems to have added quite a fair amount of liquid. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put my sugar in and we're gonna to try to run this. And because um, running a blender is uh, akin to listening to a chainsaw, I'm not gonna put you through that. 
Okay, so here's our mix. Mmm, it smells amazing. You know what? I really just smell lemon, like I don't smell avocado. So let's put it in a, I'm gonna put it in a container, I'm gonna put it in overnight, and we'll see how it comes out tomorrow. I had to film these segments differently. So uh, it's a day after doing the ice cream. I know I tricked you. I already knew how the ice cream is gonna turn out. Actually, I don't know how the ice cream is gonna turn out, to be honest, because I haven't taken it out of the freezer. We're not gonna take it out yet, because we got one more thing that we're gonna try to do. I'm going to make a box of Kraft macaroni and cheese, non spawn with using a quarter cup of avocado for the quarter cup of butter. Let's go see how that turns out. All right, so here we are, Kraft macaroni and cheese. I'm gonna follow the instructions. We gotta boil the water. The cheese powder that's in here actually has a cheese enzyme in it. And I'm not sure if that is meant to age, to age the milk or if it's just meant to make it taste like cheese. The one thing that it doesn't have is it doesn't have fat in it. And so the butter is meant to add the fat that it needs to kind of cheese up. We're gonna see if avocado can make it cheese up. Here's the thing y'all, you can't tell anybody about this video, about what I did in here. I want you to share it, but also, I don't wanna lose my Southern card because instant macaroni and cheese, even though it is sold down here, I think there's a law against actually making it on a Sunday afternoon. Do what I normally do, and what I have done with this is put the avocado in. I'm gonna put, put my quote unquote butter in. But in this case, I'm gonna put avocado in here. I'm gonna mix that all the way through this macaroni. I just realized this is gonna make a very funny color of macaroni, and it's gonna be weird. I have one macaroni that already jumped out of the pot that was like, hell no, I'm not doing this. This is disgusting. Where's the butter? Jumped out, just jumped out. He's laying on the stove dying right now. He's like, I'd rather die than do this atrocity. I don't know if it's gonna be an atrocity. I do, I have hope. Hopeful, yes I am hopeful for today. I'm gonna put the milk in, cause man, Normally there'd be a bunch of oil in there for this cheese sauce to stick to, but they're, you know, avocado necessarily acting like grease. Look, it got really smooth and creamy and it didn't turn a weird color. Oh, we gotta try this. All right, so give me a fork full of this mac and cheese. Let's see what it tastes like. Okay, okay, my new co-worker friend. As box mac and cheese goes, this is very, very good. To be fair, the avocado is not affecting the flavor of it. Did we just make box mac and cheese healthier? And so I came down to do the ice cream because I knew I would have to leave it set overnight. Let's get that out and try it. It's been in the deep freeze all night. Let's just see where it's at. Here's our container. I'm gonna be honest with you, the whole churn thing may have been important. This is what it looks like, but it is rock hard. I don't know that this has the consistency of ice cream. It might have the consistency of like Italian ice or something, but hey, let me get a scoop. So it may come as no surprise to find out that I'm just as organized with kitchen utensils before I film, as I am with brushes before I film. I hope I hope I get better. I'll try really hard. Let's scoop some of this ice cream. See if I even can. Ooh, really? I can scrape it. That's kind of the best I can do at this point. I scrape it kind of like you would an ice, like a like a sherbet. So let's just try it. <laughs> Let's try this. We'll see how this goes. Wow. 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 Oh my goodness. I could eat this all day. It has a super creamy, rich texture. Um, it's not like you don't know you're eating avocados, but at the same time, it is so lemony. You do not taste any avocado in there. 
it tastes like a very, very rich, fatty lemon ice cream. Now, it's almost like a buttery ice cream. It's really super rich. That is like the richest, most delicious lemon ice cream I've ever had. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I'm really pleasantly surprised. We have made a reasonably healthy ice cream here. Let's see. Let's see about our herbed butter. Okay, so we've got some of our herbed butter here. We're just gonna, our herbed avocado spread. And we'll see how it did with these different herbs because, you know, yes, people eat avocado toast all the time, but again, they're adding like, you know, tomatoes and stuff like that. So it, this is the sort of a tr what you would do traditionally with butter. Sage, garlic, and thyme is what we used here. And I'm going to, I'm going to give it a try. So good. I would put that on anything. I would put that on a steak that I just finished, grilled chicken. You won't get that melty, runny stuff like you get with butter, but it's so much healthier. It doesn't make everything taste like guacamole or whatever. It is a much richer flavor, but this is three places. Three places. Now that avocados have gone that were generally the sole domain of butter. This is okay. This is really good. I'm glad I tried these things. I hope you guys enjoyed trying these things. I hope you enjoyed hanging out for another Foodie Friday and learning everything there is to know about avocados. Let me know if you try any of these recipes, as always. I hope you're taking care of yourself. I hope you're taking care of each other. I hope wherever you are, you're having a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, or a great night. And as always, I'll see you in my next one. Bye, y'all. Hey, hey, and this is how it's get faded. This is how it's get faded.